Well, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We uh, now arrive at the uh, last of the plenary sessions. Uh, so the only thing between uh, you and being able to uh, uh, either go home or go out uh, is to make sure that we show that we've got the very best plenary session and crescendo into the very last uh, lap of the race to see how we can uh, uh, support the people of Syria and in the neighboring countries and the, and the, and the hospitality of the countries who neighbor Syria. So uh, I just want to uh, express my gratitude to all participants uh, so far and for the phenomenal commitments that uh, uh, we're seeing in our shared humanity and shared responsibility to the people of Syria uh, as they continue to suffer uh, the terrible consequences of conflict. And for the confidence that this implies that you have in the outstanding courage and bravery, skill, and deep commitment over a long period of time of the humanitarian uh, and relief workers uh, in the field, uh, for whom uh, I have uh, responsibility for many, and there are many uh, UN partners, uh, and I am lost in admiration every day when I think about what they do and the, uh, and the risks and the sacrifices they make selflessly to try and serve uh, those who need us most. So uh, as part of the uh, overall equation, uh, I thank you for giving them the means by which they can carry out their amazing work. So without um, wanting to in any way cause any delay to the, uh, to the thermometer which I know is rising of uh, commitments. Um, I would uh, like to call our first um, uh, speaker, who is going to be the uh, Deputy Foreign Minister from uh, Brunei. Thank you, um, Your Excellency Co-Chair. <coughs> Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, at the outset, I join others in expressing our appreciation to Prime Minister David Cameron and the Government of the United Kingdom for hosting this more, most important conference here uh, in London. Our appreciations also to His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmad Al Jabbar Al Sabah, Emir of Kuwait, Her Excellency Dr. Angela Merkel, the Federal Chancellor of Germany. Her Excellency Prime Minister Erna Solberg of Norway and His Excellency UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon for the great efforts to bring us together and come up with ways on how we can help Syria. This gathering reflects our serious commitment and support to alleviate the suffering of the Syrian people and working together towards ensuring that they not only are able to overcome but also recover from the crisis they are in. I'm therefore pleased to be here along with others expressing our support to this important initiative. It has been about five years since the Syrian crisis started, which has affected millions of its people. Many of them have fled the country and many more have been displaced internally. We can only but try to understand the difficulties that the Syrian people are facing either in the country or in the refugee camps, and we are worried over their continued suffering. In this regard, Brunei Darussalam in 2014 contributed one million US dollar for the humanitarian aid to the United Nations following the second pledging conference in Kuwait. In addition, we see the, the current crisis has affected those that are most vulnerable, particularly the children, and use, which represent important assets that the future of Syria will need to become its future leaders, future economists, future engineers, future doctors, and future teachers, to name a few. While economic opportunities and financial aid can offer short and medium term solutions, there is a need to look for longer-term solutions at the same time. It is therefore very important that these youth be given the opportunities to continue their studies and to build their capacities. In the absence of this, 
Syria will face a huge crisis that we keep hearing so often today, the so-called lost generation. While the countries in the region can offer such opportunities, we realize they too are reaching the limits and capacity of what they can do. We may need to look beyond the countries and the re in the region and be able to offer the much needed education. In this regard, Brunei will continue to offer scholarships annually to Syrian youth through our bilateral or regional assistance programs for those who wish to continue their tertiary studies through our universities or higher learning institutions in the various fields of interest to them. In addition to financing school or universities in the region, we see this as another way to provide the much needed human capacity building the youth of Syria need to rebuild the country in the future. Thank you, Mr. Fauci. Thank you very much indeed to Deputy Foreign Minister and, uh, of Trade for Brunei Dar es Salaam. Uh, the next speaker will be uh, the International Development Minister Biba from Canada. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered in London today because we share a common hope to see communities in the Middle East, in the, in the Middle East live in peace, safety, and prosperity. I have just come from, a, from Jordan and Lebanon, where the gravity of this crisis could not be more evident. Jordan has welcomed 1.4 million Syrian refugees. I was moved by the generosity of communities who have opened their schools, their clinics, and even their homes. Lebanon is also facing huge challenges with over a million Syrian refugees in a country of four million people. And let's not forget the million of Palestinian, Iraqi, and other refugees throughout the region. Syria's neighbor, are responding to the crisis. But we, as member of the broader international community, also have a shared responsibility to act. Last November, Canada put in place a special operation to bring 25,000 Syrian refugees in three months. This is in addition to our usual levels of 14,000 refugees per year. Refugees want peace in their homeland, and until they can return, they deserve to live in dignity in safe and resilient communities. In Jordan, Canada was one of the first donors to recognize the importance of building resilience. Let's help countries such as Jordan, Lebanon, and Turkey transform this crisis into an opportunity, strengthen communities strengthen economies, getting, getting ready to rebuild Syria. We must help these governments deliver adequate services and infrastructure and support them while they put in place the right conditions so that adults can earn a living and children can play, learn, and dream and not become recruitment targets for radicals. Since the beginning of the crisis, Canada has contributed almost $1 billion for humanitarian assistance, development, and security in the region. This includes our recent contribution of $100 million to the UNHCR to support its activities in the region for 2016. We are also matching donations by Canadians up to $100 million. In a few days, Prime Minister Trudeau will announce Canada's whole of government strategy for the Middle East. I can assure you that Canada is committed to a comprehensive approach. We will continue to respond to humanitarian needs and we will increase our development efforts to build resilient communities. I thank you for your attention and I look forward to working with you to meet this momentous challenge. Thank you. 
Thank you, Minister Bibo, and uh, particularly for that uh, emphasis on the, on the regional approach. Uh, next, we have the Secretary for Relations with States, Archbishop Paul Gallagher, from the Maltese. Uh, uh, from uh, from. Have we got to Archbishop. Is that correct? Yes. Archbishop Paul Gallagher. Not. Uh, I have. Okay, we have the Maltese Deputy Prime Minister, is that right? Multi please. Pro pro okay. Um, <laughs> forgive me, I'm reading from a screen, but that's fine. Well, I think we're getting it sorted out. Maltese Deputy Prime Minister, Greg, have I got that correct? Yeah, that's You're correct. very welcome okay. indeed. I'm sorry I've made you an Archbishop a little before that, your time. That, I don't know whether it's a promotion or not. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> we look forward to, in any event to what you have to okay. say. Thank you very much. Excellencies, distinguished guests. Malta welcomes this commitment to engage in solidarity and wish to thank the co-hosts for organizing this initiative. The conference gives message of hope and goodwill. The deficit in the citizens' credibility on many issues is often the result of a deficit in the implementation of concrete and effective action. Therefore, this conference is very timely because humanitarian responses are falling short and short-term solutions are not sufficient. The issues involved are highly complex and sensitive. They include migration, which is resulting in the re-emergence of extreme nationalism, protectionism, xenophobia, and geopolitical tensions. We hope that this conference will result in an ambitious recovery plan for Syria, which would complement a much needed, yet elusive political solution, which would bring back dignity, stability, and humanity to Syria. Malta has seen the traumatic and tragic effects of migration at first hand for many years. We are therefore profoundly concerned and fully aware that the current crisis is contributing to alarmingly deteriorating humanitarian situation in Syria and in other parts of the region. The prolonged conflict and its humanitarian effects are a primary cause of vulnerability and the forced displacements to neighboring countries and to Europe. We need to reinforce our commitment to end the bloodshed and stem the suffering of the Syrian people and allow unconditional and unimpeded access for aid convoys to alleviate the humanitarian plight of the Syrian people. Despite the delicate and highly daunting challenges involved, we cannot be seen to be impotent, indifferent, or complacent. We believe that this conference establishes an important and clear objective of creating hope for people in Syria and refugees in the region. Key to this will be creating economic opportunities, jobs, and providing education, both to Syrians who have fled the country and also those who have stayed behind. Malta is very appreciative of the unmatched generosity by Syria's neighboring countries in responding to the needs of refugees from Syria. We believe that by working together, the international community should achieve the objectives of this conference. Bridging the funding gap is an essential part of the process, especially support to host countries and addressing the migration dimension of the Syrian crisis. Therefore, in addition to Malta's financial contribution towards the EU's financial support to the region and in support of the conference objectives, Malta pledges the modest but heartfelt sum of 300,000 euros covering the period 2016-2018 towards the humanitarian response plan. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And bless you. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed uh, to Deputy Prime Minister Grech. Uh, the, the next uh, speaker is the Foreign Minister from uh, Hungary, Minister Tsitsiato. Well, thank you, Chair. First of all, um, I would like to uh, express how thankful we are uh, to the uh, government of uh, the United Kingdom, Germany, Norway, and Kuwait to convene this uh, conference. Uh, we consider uh, the migration crisis as the most serious challenge European Union has ever had to face since her foundation. And uh, we are convinced that 
the solution uh, to this crisis must be, found, must be found outside of the territory of the European Union. We agree with those ones who say that we have to tackle the root causes. And one of the most significant root causes of the migration crisis hitting Europe is the war and the humanitarian situation in Syria. Our approach is pretty clear what is our responsibility and what is not our responsibility. It is not our responsibility to provide the people fleeing from Syria with a European life, but it is our responsibility to help them to get back to their former life in their homes, in their home country, as soon as possible. And in order to ensure that the conditions will uh, make them able to return to their country and uh, we have to make sure that the conditions will, will make them able to live their former life that requires, after creating peace, to execute some necessary investments. Therefore, here I would like to uh, announce that Hungary is ready to build and operate a hospital in Syria as soon as the security conditions are given. Just yesterday, Hungarian government has decided to make a pledge of 5 million euros for this purpose at the first stage. During implementation, we will involve a Hungarian humanitarian aid organization with international reference. And my last remark, Mr. Chair, is that uh, we have to uh, honor and thank those countries which are neighboring uh, Syria to host millions of refugees for years. We have to uh, honor and appreciate the efforts of uh, Turkey, Jordan, Lebanon, and we should not forget uh, Iraqi Kurdistan, which has been uh, hosting uh, over more than a million of uh, refugees as well. We have to honor and respect their achievement. Mr. So, Chair, we are ready to build the hospital and operate the hospital in Syria, and we have the 5 million euros for that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm just going to look to my left because we don't have uh, anything on the screen to announce, but I'm sure there is somebody who wishes to come forward. Uh, just arrived. That's very good. The, uh, not, not the person, but the message on my screen. Uh, Foreign Minister uh, Linka Vicious from uh, Lithuania. Thank you, Foreign Minister. Sorry for the delay. We were just waiting for the electronics to catch up with your prompt arrival. It's okay, no problem. Excellencies, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, stories and images from starving Madaya have caused shock to the world, becoming a symbol of suffering. Therefore, I'd like to endorse the initiative of UK, Germany, Norway, Kuwait, UN to co host this timely, very important event. Scale of tragedy caused by war and protracted humanitarian crisis in, cri in Syria is difficult to comprehend. Uh, there are 13.5 million, we're repeating uh, many times today, vulnerable and replaced persons inside Syria and almost 5 million refugees whose condition requires our urgent attention and numbers of, of, of Mount Daily. At the, the end of this humanitarian crisis is only possible of the political resolution of the conflict through Syrian-led political process based on Geneva communique and taking into account needs, requests of all ethnic and confessional groupings in Syria to make sustainable in the future. Therefore, Lithuania, as a member, the former member of Security Council, voted for the adoption of the UN Security Council Resolution 2254, welcoming agreement reached by International Syria Support Group. This resolution was just the first political step taken by UNC uh, to resolve the five-year-long civil war in Syria. A recent situation has been deteriorated. Uh, since Russian airstrikes started in September, they caused more than 1,000 civilian deaths and forced more than 130,000 Syrians to flee their homes, thus enlarging the scale of humanitarian tragedy. We cannot envisage practical coalition with those whose actions are uh, complicating the situation even, even, even more. More than half uh, of Syrian refugees are children. Many of them were born as refugees. 
creating economic opportunities and jobs for refugees, as well as necessary preconditions to exercise their right and education, would give refugees means to self-empowerment and hope, very important hope for the future. The role of women is critical in the very instance of the conflict resolution and in the state building process. On behalf of Lithuania, I'd like to announce a pledge to contribute 50,000 euros to UNICEF fund, totally to uh, have for this year 70,000 euros in addition to UNHCR fund. Last year we made just 100,000 euros contribution to MADAT fund, 150,000 to the Council of Europe Development Bank, Migrant and Refugee Fund as well, for the contributions to totaling uh, 200,000 euros. And I can really uh, commit on behalf of my government that we will also uh, take part in eight projects with the countries in the region, mostly affected by the influx of the refugees. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much indeed, and I'm very pleased to hand over the proceedings to my co-chair, Baroness Ainley, at this point. Thank you very much, Stephen, and uh, I'd like to welcome to the platform the Legal Affairs Minister, Al Saidi, from Oman. Welcome, Minister. In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate, uh, excellency, ladies and gentlemen, I would like, first of all, to take this opportunity to express the gratitude and the appreciation of my country to the United Kingdom for taking the initiative to support and organize this post international conference to support the humanitarian situation of the Syrian as well as to chair the conference between the state of Kuwait, the Kingdom of Norway, the Federal Republic of Germany and the United Nations. I would also like to express our appreciation of the Kuwait Association وعلى رأسها صاحب السمو الشيخ صباح أحمد جابر الصباح أمير الدولة الكويت لدعم الأوضاع الإنسانية للشعب السوري الشقيق سواء من خلال استضافتها للمؤتمرات الدولية الثلاثة السابقة أو من خلال دعمها السخي للنازحين واللاجئين السوريين سيدات السادة لم تعد معاناة الشعب السوري الشقيق في الداخل والخارج تخفى على أحد وهي تزداد سوءا عاما بعد عام والأرقام والتقارير التي تم استعراضها صباح هذا اليوم توضح حجم هذه المأساة وبلا شك أن النقص الحاد في توفير احتجاج الأساسي للنازحين واللاجئين إلى جانب الشتاء القارس قد زاد من حجم المعاناة وهما يستلزم مضاعفة الجهود الدولية لتلبية الاحتياجات الإنسانية المتزايدة للشعب السوري لقد شاركت سلطنة عمان في المؤتمرات الدولية الثلاثة السابقة لدعم الأوضاع الإنسانية في سوريا ونفذت خلال السنوات الماضية برنامجا وهو لا يزال مستمرا حتى الآن تخفيف معاناة اللاجئين السوريين من خلال تقديم مساعدات نقدية والعينية للمحتاجين وتوفير المنازل المتنقلة في المخيمات وذلك عبر الهيئة العمالية للأعمال الخيرية وبالتنسيق مع المنظمات الدولية ذات الصلة وقد جاوزت مخصصات هذا البرنامج الذي لا يزال مستمرا أكثر من 50 مليون دولار أمريكي سيدات السادة وفي الوقت الذي نؤكد فيه على أهمية تكاتف جهود المجتمع الدولي لتوفير استجابة مطلوبة للنداءات الأممية العاجلة لدعم الأوضاع الإنسانية للأخوة السوريين ندعو إلى إيجاد حل جذري ينهي هذه المعاناة الإنسانية التي يشهدها العالم أجمع ويوقف سير الدماء وهذا لن يتأتى إلا بإيجاد حل سلمي توافقي بين الحكومة السورية والمعارضة السورية وذلك على أساس ما تم الاتفاق عليه في مؤتمر فيينا وفي الختام لا يسعني إلا أن أجد الشكر والتقدير لكل الجهود التي بذلت لعقد هذا المؤتمر الدولي آمنين أن تكلم بالنجاح وتحقيق الأهداف الإنسانية التي من شأنها تخفيف المعاناة التي مر بها الشعب السوري الشقيق وأيضا تخفيف العدء على دول الجوار السوري والتي نقدر ونثمن جهودها في هذا الجانب الإنساني الكبير والسلام عليكم and value greatly. Thank you. thank you. May the peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah be upon you. And thank you to uh, Oman, the Legal Affairs Minister. May I now invite to the platform the Foreign Minister Silva from Portugal.
Chairpersons, ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today to support Syria and the region. We share the same goal, but in order to reach it, we must work on three levels. First, there is no alternative to an inclusive political solution to the Syrian crisis. Portugal fully supports UN-led international efforts. As a first step, a ceasefire must be reached without delay. Secondly, terrorism must be fought without mercy, and so Portugal remains engaged in the global coalition against terrorism. Thirdly, we must deal with the humanitarian crisis, and on that level, today's conference gave worthy emphasis to the education aspect. A Portuguese pedagogue, João dos Santos, once said that, quote, the secret of a man in his, is in his own childhood. So the secret to Syria's future lies, lays in its children, in its young men and women, in their education. So the fundamental right to education cannot and must not be denied to serious school children and university students, also because of its Catholic effect in the whole development process. Guaranteeing that right is essential to alleviate the long-term war effects to achieve peaceful reconciliation and effective post-conflict reconstruction. Failing to do so would deprive serious society from the contribution of entire generations. This is a priority for my country. Since 2001, in the Human Rights Commission and then in the Human Rights Council, Portugal has consistently promoted the right to education. Last July, we have tabled a resolution adopted by consensus strongly condemning all attacks on educational institutions, their students and staff. In addition, my government proudly supports the initiative of the Global Platform for Syrian Students, an emergency scholarship program for university students affected by war, founded in 2013 by Jorge Sampaio, former president of Portugal. Until now, this program has allocated 150 scholarships in 10 different countries and six at scaling up the number of Syrian beneficiaries around the world. Furthermore, Portugal is working to put up a rapid response mechanism for higher education in emergencies aimed at creating learning opportunities for, refuge, for refugees in Europe. Ladies and gentlemen, besides abiding by our resettlement commitments, Portugal contributed to the Madant Fund, as well as other international efforts in Syria and its neighborhoods, as the UNHCR, UNICEF, and the World Food Program. And because this is a challenge that concerns all of us, I hereby announce that in the next months and years, Portugal will significantly increase its support for Syria, for the outstanding efforts of Jordan and Lebanon, and for the whole region, including the refugee facility for Turkey. Thank you very much. In, uh, in thanking Foreign Minister Silva of Portugal, can I now call upon from Romania, Minister Councillor Dragoli. Distinguished guests, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we gather today to continue what we started in Berlin and Kuwait to address the needs of the Syrian people and to make sure that we do our utmost to provide both emergency relief and longer term assistance for Syria and the region. Our purpose is also to send a joint and firm signal emphasizing the continued support from the international community to this grave and extended crisis. We would like to praise all efforts of the United Nations and the International Syria Support Group for bringing the first signs of hope and the much needed paradigm shift in approaching both the political solution and the refugee situation 
efforts reflected in the adoption of Security Council Resolution 2254. We are committed to support the Regional Refugee and Resilience Plan. In our opinion, together with the Strategic Response Plan, this innovative instrument incorporates, for the first time, relief and development activities in addition to protection and humanitarian assistance. We commend the heroic work of humanitarian personnel on the ground, and we call on all parties to allow full and unimpeded access to the population in distress. Ensuring access to basic services is essential, and it cannot be achieved without free passage and proper protection of medical facilities and personnel, as well as respecting the neutrality of humanitarian workers in general. Equally worthy of our praise are Syria's neighbors and other countries of the region that have assumed the commendable efforts of hosting and caring for the Syrian refugees. Romania has responded favorably to the calls of support from the international community in order to alleviate the humanitarian pressure. Romania has increased its contributions to the UNHCR and the Welfare Program. Following the pledge made at the Kuwait conference, we have continued to provide humanitarian assistance for the Syrian refugees from Jordan, Turkey, and from Iraq, both at bilateral level as well as in the framework of the UNHCR projects. Additionally, we supplemented our emergency humanitarian aid with 226,000 euros for the Syrian refugees in Jordan. Speaking about education, the Romanian government allocated close to 800,000 euros for granting more than 200 scholarships in Romania to Syrian students and will continue this commitment. We are aware that all efforts, both inside Syria and its neighborhood, cannot be successful in the absence of appropriate funds. Romania's national pledge for 2016-2017 is a further 420,000 euros. Additionally, Romania is keen to continue the training programs on border management with participants from Jordan, Lebanon, and also the training program in the field of emergency medicine that we have already initiated with Jordan. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I will end my intervention reiterating the strong belief that the Syrian crisis has to have a political settlement and that it has to have it fast. Allow me to reassure you that Romania is ready to work closely with the international community in order to identify the most appropriate answers leading to a sustainable and realistic solution to the situation in Syria. Thank you. And thanking Romania, can I now call upon from Senegal, Justice Minister Carver. Mesdames et Messieurs, Ladies and gentlemen, la délégation du Sénégal se réjouit de participer à cette importante conférence sur la Syrie. Au nom de la, du président de la République du Sénégal, Macky Sall, je félicite Macky les organisateurs like de la conférence, le Royaume-Uni, l'Allemagne, la Norvège Norway, et le Koweït. And Kuwait. Et j'encourage tous les participants like participant à travailler ensemble pour atteindre les objectifs de paix et de stabilité de la Syrie. Il nous faut travailler d'arrache-pied pour instaurer et obtenir un cessez-le-feu permanent to, uh, et durable pour enraciner a, la paix. Des crimes de guerre et des crimes contre l'humanité continuent d'être perpétués contre les populations civiles syriennes dont l'immense détresse nous interpelle tous. And, uh, Il est aujourd'hui évident is, uh, que la solution militaire est loin de résoudre la tragédie humaine. Course, uh, en cours, cela fait déjà cinq ans que les souffrances durent. Il faut encourager un véritable processus politique avec tous les acteurs politiques pour ouvrir les voies durables de la paix, de la stabilité et de la sécurité dans cette région. Le Sénégal, en tant que membre non permanent du Conseil de sécurité, ne ménagera aucun effort diplomatique pour faire en sorte que des actions efficaces soient entreprises pour relever cet énorme défi. 
Il faut, pour mieux le préparer, songer à l'éducation des enfants en évitant qu'une génération n'aille pas à l'école et soit sans instruction. En effet, bâtir la paix, c'est éduquer ces enfants, ces millions d'enfants et particulièrement ces filles pour en faire demain les piliers de la reconstruction de leur pays. C'est le lieu de félicité, les pays limitrophes et d'ailleurs qui accueillent ces millions de réfugiés syriens fuyant la guerre et la crise humanitaire qui frappe de plein fouet son peuple. Madaya rappelle ce visage de cette crise. Aujourd'hui est un jour d'espoir pour la Syrie, l'engagement de la communauté internationale dans la solidarité à trouver une solution pérenne et manifeste. Mais il nous faut passer à l'action. Ici, maintenant, pour soutenir avec force toutes les actions devant favoriser la mise en œuvre des solutions définitives et pérennes, ouvrant la voie à un avenir meilleur et équitable pour chaque citoyen et en même temps ouvrant la voie à la prospérité du peuple syrien dont il faut abréger au plus vite les souffrances. Nous sommes dans le temps de l'action. Nous sommes dans le temps de la responsabilité. Le peuple syrien le mérite. Thank you to Justice Minister Kalpa uh, from uh, Senegal. And uh, we now reach the last country to pledge today. And may I call upon, please, the Secretary of State for Latin American Affairs and for International Development Cooperation, Jesus Gracia from Spain. We are all witness of the worst humanitarian crisis since World War II, and we need to seize the opportunity provided by the unanimously adopted United Nations Security Council Resolution 2254 and its roadmap in order to make progress towards a political solution in Syria. Spain has actively supported this resolution in the Security Council and will continue to be involved both in humanitarian and political efforts to put an end to this human tragedy. And this includes Resolution 2258 that demands all parties to comply with international humanitarian law. This is why we call on all the Syrian parties to commit to the Geneva talks as well as to act constructively and in good faith in order to create hope for the people of Syria. We need to work hard to help consolidate the proximity talks and to create the conditions for a widespread and sustainable ceasefire. This would enable us to concentrate on the humanitarian relief and the fight against Daesh. Spain would like to reiterate its support to the United Nations Special Envoy for Syria, Estefan de Mistura, and would like to underline the central role attributed to the United Nations. Its active leadership is crucial in order to achieve progress both in the political dialogue and in the humanitarian situation. Spain is firmly com committed and stands ready to contribute politically and financially to the collective efforts of the international community. We need a renewed imp impulse to respond to the humanitarian crisis resulting from the Syria conflict. Spain is hereby pledging an initial contribution of 7 million euros in humanitarian aid with the aim of addressing people's needs both in, within Syria and in neighboring countries. We condemn in the strongest terms the use of hunger and access to water as a weapon of war. All parties must take steps to eliminate this abhorrent practice and the United Nations must have monitoring capabilities in this regard. We will have in mind situations such as Madaya or Deir Sor. It is absolutely imperative to ensure humanitarian access in order to assess humanitarian needs and to evaluate interventions. We must also demand all parties to respect the principle of medical neutrality. 
Spain would like to reiterate its acknowledgement and appreciation for the solidarity shown, shown by neighboring countries as regards the dramatic flow of those who flee a war-torn Syria. Lebanon, Jordan, Turkey, and Iraq are making an extraordinary effort that we must acknowledge. Part of the response of, the response of Spain includes providing meaningful support to neighboring countries to successfully absorb the economic and social impact of the refugee crisis. We also grant our full support to the Jordan response plan. We encourage the creation of the special economic zones where jobs would be available for displaced Syrians. As the EU Commission has already announced, we support more flexible trade rules for products manufactured within the zones. Let me finish by reiterating the commitment of both my government and the Spanish people as regards the need to achieve in Syria a meaningful political transition as well as humanitarian solution for those who have suffered so much for so long. Thank you. In thanking the Secretary of State for International Development in Spain, it is now my pleasure to hand over to my colleague, the Secretary of State for International Development for the United Kingdom, Justine Greening. Thank you, uh, Baroness and Lee. Uh, well, di distinguished guests, I have this amazing privilege of being the person that gets to wrap up this incredible conference and day that we've had today. I want to start by saying a huge thank you to absolutely everybody who's contributed today and to everybody who's worked so hard over so many weeks and months to put this conference together. And on behalf of the UK government, I'd like to also massively thank our co-hosts, Germany, Norway, Kuwait, and the UN. But most of all, I want to say thank you to everybody here, individuals, countries, NGOs, and businesses who came here today and pledged to stand by Syria in the weeks, months, and years ahead. I think nobody came here this morning doubting the scale of the challenge we're facing, and we've heard so many speakers today talk about that. This is not only the world's biggest a most urgent humanitarian crisis, but its far-reaching consequences are touching all of us. The unprecedented people flows, a whole generation of children at risk of being lost to conflict. And in these last five years, the people of Syria have endured so many horrors, the barrel bombs, starvation and torture inflicted by the Assad regime, the unspeakable atrocities committed by Daesh and others involved in the fighting. Now, peace alone will give the Syrian people their future back. But in the meantime, the question that we face today was could the world come together and make a real and lasting difference to the lives of millions of people affected by this crisis? Could this be a turning point and a day of hope for those people affected by the Syrian conflict? And in the end, it all comes down to choices. And I believe that today we've made the right choices because countries, donors, and businesses have all stepped up. You've all come forward, and we have raised new funds for this crisis to the amount of over $10 billion. As the Secretary General said... Together, we have committed the largest ever amount of money in response to a humanitarian crisis in a single day. That is a phenomenal record-breaking total. But it also fully reflects the enormity of the crisis that we're all facing and the scale of the suffering. It also represents a promise, a promise not just to the Syrian people, but to those countries that we've heard from today who are supporting them, countries like Lebanon, like Jordan, Turkey, Iraq, and Egypt, who've shouldered so much of the responsibility. But we've gone beyond simply funding. 
because today was more than that. It was more than about getting funding for UN agencies and NGOs to provide day-to-day life-saving support, as vital as that is. We also made a choice on behalf of serious children and children in host communities as well, because the, today the world has been unequivocal that there should be no lost generation of children affected by the Syrian conflict. And we have pledged to deliver education to children inside Syria and outside Syria. We've pledged to make sure that there's access to education for all refugee and host community children by the end of the 2016-17 school year. Now, this is a monumental pledge and a crucial one, not just for those children and their hopes for their future, but it's an investment in Syria's future as much as anything else that we've done today. And today we've also made a second critical choice on supporting jobs for refugees and economic growth in the countries hosting them. And these historic agreements with Turkey, Lebanon and Jordan have the potential not only to open up economic opportunities for refugees, but to create jobs as well for local people and to leave a legacy of economic growth in the countries that have so generously opened up their borders to the vast majority of Syrian refugees. Finally and critically, we have all condemned again the ongoing atrocities committed by all parties to the conflict. We do not accept them. The barrel bombing, the sexual violence, the targeting of schools and hospitals, and today with one voice, we have rightly called on all parties to the conflict and those with, it, with influence over them to ensure that international humanitarian law is upheld. Today's been an unprecedented response to an unprecedented crisis. We've offered an alternative vision of hope to the people of Syria and all those affected by this crisis. And we should take real pride in what we've been able to achieve today. Now, though, we need to deliver. Today, we set the ambition for the sake of Syria and all of us, we've now got to make that ambition a reality and we've got to keep our promise to the Syrian people. If we can, I believe that in the years ahead, we can truly look back with pride and with hope on what we've managed to accomplish today. And I think in the years to come, we will truly be able to say that we've been part of a historic and an incredible day. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for your support throughout and the support you will give in the coming months. You can make the difference. Thank you. And thank you from the United Nations. <laughs>